here's our scene we've been working on forever. It's kind of fun. Hopefully you've learned a lot by building the camera and building the scene and being able to fly around. I got kind of tired of looking at cubes, though. We've been using cubes forever, and I said, I want to do an arrow. I showed you an arrow in the last video. and So I went to the shape generator, and I added this make arrow function that does the exact same thing as make cube does and make triangle. I simply throw all this data onto the stack. Look at me. I painstakingly typed all this in. Uh, after it's on the stack, then we instantiate it out on the heap, copy it to the heap, mem copy, same thing with the indices, put it on the stack, copy it out to the heap so that we can return it. Then in our GL window, I don't have to say make cube, I can say make arrow, build that, run that, and with this one little change, instead of having cubes, we now have arrows, which is really cool. A nice thing about arrows is that they have a direction. Whereas the cubes, we kind of had to memorize what colors were on what side. With the arrows, we can quickly identify which way is forward, and that's nice. I actually felt bad for doing all this arrow code offline, uh, but I didn't think it would be a very interesting video seeing me type all this in. I should upload this to my website so you can download it. Otherwise, you could just type it in, copy it off the video. That's Yeah, that's that would be painful. Maybe if I get enough requests to upload this, then... Uh, in the comments. That'd be a good thing. Make a comment. I can put it up for you. Anyway, I can make an arrow. I send that data down. Now, I also made some other changes. Remember, we were doing our instancing in the previous videos the correct way. We were instancing using buffer data because that's nice and clean, and we can render several instances with one draw call. I want to talk about vertex arrays, and as I was trying to get the vertex arrays video going, the instancing code was just getting in my way. It was too much of a pain, so I went to the slower, old-school way of going back, to, well it's not old school, it's just not as efficient, uh, going to the uniforms where I say, well, full transformation matrix will be a uniform instead of a vertex attribute that's instanced, as we've seen in previous videos. Well, that means I had to change my GL code, if you can see send data down to open GL. This is all the same, but we had a bunch of instancing code down here to send down the instance matrices. I deleted that, and instead I went to paint GL and tried to make this as readable as possible. We have our view to projection matrix. We've talked about that several times. We have our world to view matrix. And then to optimize this a little bit, I said, well, let's have a world to projection matrix. This matrix will move the world in front of the camera and also project the scene into projected space. And all I had to do was multiply the two the two above said matrices into one matrix and combine it there. It's a simple optimization. And then each of the cubes, or I guess they're arrows now, I should change these variable names, but each of the each of the geometries has their own model to world transformation matrix. And so I move these calls down here. It's the exact same calls and data and parameters we were using in previous videos. And then to get the full transformation matrix, I combine the world to projection matrix, this matrix, with that one model matrix. That is our full transformation matrix. And I send that down the old clunky way using the uniform data, and I say draw. And then for the second geometry, I give it a different world or model to world transformation matrix. Combine that with the world to projection matrix and that model matrix making the full transformation matrix uniform that down and then I have to do another draw so less optimal using the uniforms because I have to send the data down each time in between calls and I also have to call draw elements once whereas with the the instancing approach we were using in previous videos we could just say draw elements and all the data was there the buffers were set up and off it went to the sunset that was kinda nice but I'm sorry I went back to this a little bit clunkier technique, but I think it really helped when I introduced vertex arrays. It reduced the amount of stuff I had to throw at you. So in the next video, we're going to talk about vertex arrays. I think they're widely misunderstood. It seems like most of the literature I've read on them gets them wrong, and so we'll talk about that in the next video. And then hopefully we can go back to the instancing code soon so we don't have this clunky approach, but eh, who knows.